Today I'm going to, I, I, I had, I've had this subject on my brain for a couple of weeks. And when someone had um, said this on one of the films that I had watched, and um, I'm going to take an article out of Matthew uh, 6. Um, I, mean, I mean, sorry, Matthew 7, uh, 13, and uh, 14. It's a Sermon on the Mount. I don't, don't get your hopes up. I'm not going to do the whole thing. It, we don't have all night long. And just only two, two verses out of that. And it's a real good. The narrow way. Enter, the, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it. Because narrow is the gate. And the difficult is the way which leads to the which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Thank you, O Lord God, Almighty Father, for this great day that we come and set aside and praise your holy name. Help us and guide us and direct our thoughts, direct the words, O Lord Jesus Christ, that you've given me. Help me to understand what to say and how to say it in your name. Help us and guide us, and thank you for this church that we've come to today and we praise your holy name amen hold on just a second all that good singing i must tell jesus um who who can't talk to jesus who who can't it's just he makes it so easy to talk to him. He, he just, it, sometimes I find it hard. I, I don't, I guess I kind of have to admit this, even sometimes to her. Yeah, I find it hard talking to my wife sometimes because I just do. And she finds it hard talking to me. And we've shared that a little bit, but, and, and it really is because we're not the same. We're trying to travel down that road. But we're not the same. But we're, we're doing a good job. We've had how many years so far? <laughs> I, I might, you might not see me the same way next Wednesday <laughs> as I am right now. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, one guy said, what can you carry on the narrow way. What can you carry on the narrow way? All of a sudden he said, you can't carry nothing. You can't carry anything. Nothing. On the broad way, we look at a lot of things and we see the broad way, <laughs> not just the broad way on Broadway, but we see it on TV. We see it in magazines. We see it on our cell phones. It's almost like TV, right? We see what they do. We see how they do it. We see, sometimes we see just the slow people just walking around, doing what they want to do, how they want to do it, not, not having no understanding about what life is really about. They're going to do it their way and how they want to do it. But they're still on that broad road. And let's talk, and let's look at the, um, the other way that some people do on the broad road. They, they're at a fast pace. They're at a fast pace. And they're trying to catch everything they can. And they're running so fast and they're looking away and they're looking around and they hit a brick wall or two every once in a while. My son was riding, when he first started riding his bicycle, he said, Dad, I can, I can really ride fast. I said, yeah, but you got to look forward. If you don't look forward, you're, you're, you're going to get hurt. You're going to have a, a bad accident as on a bicycle. And I would see him, I would be coming in from work and I'd see him riding his bicycle and the other people, other little boys chasing him and he's looking back as he's going forward. I said, oh my goodness. And I, I roll down the one and say, Todd, Todd, stop for just a second. He would stop and, and I would say, Todd, you can't look backwards. 
I got a knock on my door one day, on my back door. And I said, who's at my back door? How'd, how'd they get back there? And his little boy, he done climbed over the fence. He knew how to get to our back door. I don't, he said, Todd has an accident over on the other street, and, and he's hurt. And I ooh, run across the, on, on the other side of, uh, of the house. Um, and he was on, laying out there on the street, I mean, on the sidewalk, and his legs all tangled up. And he's not saying nothing. I thought he had a broke leg, the way, what it looked like. His legs were all tangled up. But, and I went over there and looked and tried. <laughs> I was unfolding his legs out of the bicycle, and, and, he, he's, and he wasn't crying. He said, I think he said, I, I wasn't looking forward. I, 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 he was looking backwards. He said, yes, Dad. He didn't ride his bike too much after that. It was a pretty bad one, but he, no legs were broken. No legs were broken. But in life, shape, Satan doesn't shoot a straight arrow at you. It's one of those ones around the corner that you, that you don't see coming. Let's talk about the runners, the people that are running. They are professionals. Those guys run. They know what they want. They get what they want, however they get it. Whenever they get it, they look at the desires of their eyes. That looks good. Can I obtain it? Can I make enough money? Can I get to that next level? How can I get to that next level? Oh, I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to get to that next level. I'm not worried about the next person. I want to get to that next level. Oh, I like what I want. I want that boat. I want that car. I want that woman and she needs a lot and I can make a lot of money to make her happy there's two two times you smile when you buy a boat if, if you ever heard this when you buy it and when you sell it in the between hopefully you have some smiles but I have experienced I haven't I've experienced a boat but not in that part um, if you keep up the maintenance you'll be pretty good but some people don't do that and and it could be a bad in between smiles but in life you do smile at the first okay but it's no smiles too much and in, in during and after not a lot of smiles on that broad road what do we take with us on that broad road all the material things in life, you know, they're just there. But there's one thing that they don't really understand how they obtain it, but it, it just comes. It's malice. Jealousy. Anger. It just starts creeping in. I can get money. The that desire that it comes inside of you. I want more. I want more. I, I, I got a million dollars, but I can get one more million dollars. It's easier to make that other million dollars. Infidelity. Lust. Oh, my goodness. We could stop and camp there for a little bit. The lust of the eye. It's not just women or men. It's lusting after the current things in life that we try to get because we think we like it. We think we want it. We think we need it. Unforgiveness. Infidelity. When we get that woman, she's not good. Or get that man, it's not good enough. After a while, I got to have something else. It's all on this broad road. It's, you can do anything you want. Remember? Broad is the way to destruction. We don't think about that when we're having fun. Malice, like I say, grudges. Idols. Oh my goodness. There's one idol today that people don't understand that's coming about. And it, it's, it's crazy, but they're letting the old idols back in today. And they're crept in. 
as many, many attributes that we acquire on this broad road. What are we going to do about them? How can we handle them? And there's one man that had, he had a lot of, uh, he acquired a lot of um, attributes or things inside his soul, his mind, his body that we don't understand how he, how this could have happened, but it, it did. And Jesus had, was on one of the boats and they came up on the, uh, the Gadarenes and all of a sudden here come this man screaming and hollering at him and said, Jesus, Jesus, why you come here to bother us? Why you come in here to, uh, to, torment, to torment us before our time? Jesus told him to shut up. Just be still. Don't, don't say nothing. Then he asked him, what is your name? I think he did that because of the people that were around him. He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. As it goes, a legion of soldiers in the Roman army is about 6,000. How can one person have 6,000 demons inside of them? 6,000 demons. They were cutting him. They were tormenting him. They were so strong that no change could, when they fetter him and, and chained him up, he would just break them. How has this broad road led this man to have that many demons inside of him? Oh my, what did this man do? He didn't start all of a sudden have demons in him. It was just a little bit at a time. When you start on that broad road, come do this. Come do that. It won't hurt you. It'll make you stronger. You can do better in life. Teachers that don't need to be teaching people how to live. We have that today. Sadly, some of them are in church. Sadly. So let's talk about the other road, the narrow road. The narrow road. Can I have malice in my heart and go on the narrow road? that has no shoulders. This narrow road isn't broad. This narrow road is hard. Can I have grudges? Can I have unforgiveness? Can I have jealousy on this road? No. I can't have that. But you know how I know that I can walk this road? I have one example that I know that made it and he's there. He told me, if you make it, I will allow you to sit on my throne. My father made me. Jesus. What did he give us to walk this road? Joy. Peace. Long suffering. He gave us the tools to run this race down that narrow road. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He defeated Satan with those three. When Satan came to, in the desert to tempt him, he defeated him with God's words. That's how we do it. One man, one theologian said, uh, hey, uh, when, when you go to this road, when you're going down this road and you have a fork in the road and you're, you're trying to figure out which way do I go, there's a, a dead man standing on the left side and there's a living man standing on the right side. Which one are you going to ask questions to? Which one's going to answer you? Which one is going to give you good advice? The man that's alive, Jesus. The only way we can get to where we need to go to. What's in my heart? 
what's in my heart, what's in my mind, what's in my soul. That determines which way you're going to go. Because if you don't know, you're going to go where it's having fun. But if you do know, you still got to be careful because we have that right to do evil or good. I don't want freedom. Don't want it. It's, it's, it was bad. <laughs> I had that freedom for a little bit, but it's bad. I don't want that right to pick what I want to do. I want to pick that right, what Jesus wants me to do. There is no other way. Patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I've never had self-control since until I came to Jesus and faithfully started living for him. I was out of control. I was doing anything and everything I wanted to do. On my way to hell. Don't you tell me? I was scared. Even though I, I was living a good life. The good life of the broad road. <laughs> I was still scared inside. I'm, I, might, I might not wake up tomorrow. Or I might miss the rapture. It, every day. It was an everyday thing. It kept gnawing at me. Thank the Lord. The Holy Spirit was gnawing at my head went to church and, and gave my life back to Jesus and got back on this road. Don't tell me it's not hard. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed to the Father, Oh Lord. He knew what he was fixing to do. In kind of way, we know what's fixing to happen to us. We know what this narrow road, we know which way it goes and where it's going to take us to a point. If the rapture don't happen real soon, we got to make our mind up, as Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, God. Yours. Not my will. Because my will, I don't want to do this because it's going to hurt. Second Corinthians 5, 21. He made him who knew no sin sin for us that we might have the righteousness of God in him yeah. what what fortitude this man had as a man and as God to give up his life to go through that torment as he was traveling down this road for us that we could walk this narrow road and say, not my will, Lord, but yours. Not mine. We cannot but say this to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Guide me. Direct me. I don't want to fall anymore. Because <laughs> the pastor was talking about this the other day. It was like, this generation will not pass. And they're living, it's living right here in front of us. This generation will not pass until this comes about. We believe the rapture. Lois says it's part of your generation. And it's awesome to live and to see these things come to pass as we're walking down this road. But we have to walk down this narrow road. The, you know what the bad thing about it, walking down a narrow road, and I hate to say this bad thing, we can see other things about us. We can see other things. We can see the good things of life. What we used to have, oh, but we can't have that in our head. And, it, and I just learned this the other day. I can't have that in my mind, circumventing my thoughts, saying, George, remember that? I don't want to even, I don't want to even say I, want, I remember. No, I don't want to even want it. I don't want that. I want to have what Jesus wants me to have in my mind and in my soul and in my heart because I don't want anything coming out other than Jesus out of my heart and out of my mouth also. 
I don't want to be thinking those things. I want those thoughts in my head. And you say, how can you do that? It's a daily walk with Jesus. Because God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. How can I do, I, how, how can I do that? And, and people would say, how can you live such a holy life? I said, I, I don't live a holy life in front of you. I live a holy life in front of God because I cannot live a holy life in front of you because once I do something you don't think you like, you're going to pounce on me and say, oh, I thought you was a Christian. Yeah. Oh, look at you. you. Look what you did. But I can live a holy life in front of God because he said I could because Jesus said I could. Jesus said, you could. You can. There's no other way we can come to the Father but by Jesus. No other way can we be saved but by Jesus. None other way. The cross is the way. There is a light at the end of the road. Like I say, it's a light at the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the road. At the end of the narrow road. That's Jesus. And we have to keep our eyes. We have to keep our mind. We have to keep our soul. On him. If it's like 24-7. Well that's. That's what we're supposed to do. There was nothing about Jesus. Oh, pray. Pray. He got up and prayed in the morning, early in the morning, before business started. He was going about doing the Father's business on that road. The narrow road. We can carry Jesus on the narrow road. Because he said we could. We have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. And somehow I don't understand it. And this is the reason why the scientists and those smart people out there who have all these think tanks saying it can't be possible. And I have God with me also. I have the Trinity with me. Because they said I can. And I want them with me. How it, how they... How can God be so big and so wonderful and so uh, a creator as he and so much power that he lives within me through the Holy Spirit? I, I can't figure that one out, but I'm going to take it. I, I want it. I don't want to let it loose because what I know, what the Bible says because of the faith that I have is true. There is a heaven and as many scholars have figured out, Jesus spoke about hell. Well, he did about a lot of things. And there is a hell. Which one are you going to take? Even though I'm talking to a lot of, of, of elder Christians here, we still have to make that decision every day. To say, hey, I'm living for Jesus no matter what. Oh, it's hard. Oh my goodness, these guys fixing to kill me. What am I going to do? And Jesus walked right straight through them. Right straight through them. Like it was nothing. I'll tell you this. When I was, uh, I, my mom and dad, they divorced and it was in the 50s. And you think divorce in the 50s. Oh my goodness, it, it, it happened. But my mom was at a truck stop and with all three of us, I think, and this guy was after my mom. And all three of us, we, I don't know all what happened, but I knew this man was after my mother. And this lady come in to, into the, um, the women's restroom. She said, put this coat on, honey. Nobody will see who you are. We wa I remember walking out of that truck stop and... Nobody knew who we were. We walked to where we were supposed to go and we left. Thank the Lord. Jesus said, my blood will cover you. I'll give you a robe of righteousness. 
Nobody can bother you anymore. Nobody. Isn't that awesome? Nobody. We won't have to worry no more. Because Jesus said so. We can walk that narrow road because Jesus said so. We can have all the attributes of the Holy Spirit because Jesus said so. He had them. Lord bless you and keep you. And thank you, O oh Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the words and thank you for your blessing upon us all. Thank you, O oh Lord.